Good morning. Lovely to see you folks this morning. It's a slow news day, so I have nothing to say that I didn't already put in the Thursday newsletter. So if you have not yet subscribed to our Thursday newsletter, please do. Um, but uh, that's, that's where I put all the news that's fit to print. Sorry. Oh, that's right. Yes, please. Please come forward, Heather. Good morning. The Girl Guide Chocolatey Mint Cookies are here. So I'm helping to sell them along with Sashi and Mupo, who are in Girl Guides. So either approach one of them or myself. I'm hoping there'll be a note in the bulletin next week, but it's hmcameron1 at gmail or find me in the church directory. The chocolatey mint are only available in the fall, and there was a shortage because of COVID, so I thought this was very important news. It's, it's Girl Guide's only fundraiser in the year, and it's a wonderful activity for the girls to be part of, so thank you. Thanks, Heather. Is there anything else from the community that uh, people would like to share? Okay, obviously we have a baptism this Sunday, and there's the main star of the show. Um, it's going to be a lot of liturgy this morning as a result, so I promise I will keep my remarks short. Uh, so we will get on with the main event and uh, welcome this new lovely young person to our family of faith. Um, I think that's, that, those are all the announcements, so let us prepare for worship. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. There is one body and one spirit. There is one, God, one, God, one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, one God. We sing Immortal Invisible to um, the tune printed in the back of the bulletin.
Grant, O merciful God, that your Church, being gathered by your Holy Spirit into one, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of King Zedekiah of Judah, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. At that time the army of the king of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem, and the prophet Jeremiah was confined in the court of the guard that was in the palace of the king of Judah, where King Zedekiah of Judah had confined him. Zedekiah had said, Why do you prophesy and say, Thus says the Lord, I am going to give this city into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came to me. Hanamel, son of your uncle Shalom, is going to come to you and say, Buy my field that is at Anathoth, for the right of redemption by purchase is yours. Then my cousin Hanamel came to me in the court of the guard, in accordance with the word of the Lord, and said to me, Buy my field that is in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin, for the right of possession and redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. And I bought the field at Anathoth from my cousin Hanamel and weighed out the money to him, 17 shekels of silver. I signed the deed, sealed it, got witnesses, and weighed the money on scales. Then I took the sealed deed of purchase, containing the terms and conditions, and the open copy. And I gave the deed of purchase to Baruch, son of Nariah, son of Masaiah, in the presence of my cousin Hanamel, in the presence of the witnesses who signed the deed of purchase, and in the presence of all the Judeans who were sitting in the court of the guard. In their presence I charged Baruch, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these deeds, both the sealed deed of purchase and this open deed, and put them in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks, God. Those who dwell in the shelter of the Most High They shall say to the Lord, You are our refuge and our stronghold. The Lord shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter. The wings of the Lord shall cover you, and you shall find refuge under them. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, of the plague that stalks in the darkness, Because they are bound to me in love, I will protect them. They shall call upon me. I am with them in trouble. With long life will I satisfy them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the first letter to Timothy. Of course there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment, for we brought nothing into the world so that we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmless desires that 
plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. But as for you, man of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Jesus Christ, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession. I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. It is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please stand. And repeat after me. Alleluia. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously uh, every day. And at the gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to be longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where, where he was being tor tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away from Laz with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Ab Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, 
for I am in an agony these fl- with these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in, in like manner evil things. But now he is com- comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm <coughs> has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they may not, may, will not also come into the place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them, he said. No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I promised I would keep it short. Please be seated. Uh, And I will. But I have a microphone, so I'm still louder. Uh, The readings today are amazing, particularly for baptism. Because, um, you know, I, I've been spending a lot of administrative leadership time in the institutional church managing decline. Uh, our, the church is in decline, our numbers are down, our budgets are down, and this is bigger than All Saints, this is bigger than the Diocese of Kootenai, this is bigger than the Anglican Church of Canada, this is all denominations, all Christianity in the West. Um, and so to do a baptism, to bring someone into this faith right now, is a little bit like Jeremiah buying land in Israel when the barbarians are at the gates, right? You've got, you've got um, Nebuchadnezzar, uh, the Babylonians at the gates about to overrun Jerusalem. They've been under siege and they are going to lose. They're about to lose. And it's at that moment that Jeremiah decides to buy land and go through all the rigmarole, like all this extreme level of, um, uh, of, of contract making and all, let's do all the rituals and we'll write up a deed and we'll do, and, and it's supposed to be absurd. It's meant to be absurd. Why would you write up a deed in a piece of land that's about to be overrun and not even owned by any that's in Israel anymore. Well, because one day land will be bought and sold in Israel again. This is going to be God's land and will always be God's land, even though the disaster is about to befall us. And of course, when you think about what Jeremiah was railing against in the state of Israel at the time, Israel was still Israel. It still had the form, the language, the Um, the structure of the people of God, and yet it had fallen away from the heart of what it meant to be the people of God, faithfulness to the covenant. And so the heart of Israel still was a matter of memory and record and still was a, a matter of longing for individuals like Jeremiah and others, but it had fallen away from being the heart of the administration of the land of Israel. And so it's hard not to see some parallels between that and institutional Christianity today where the heart of Christianity is as powerful and relevant and compelling as ever uh, in in a world that is run by violence and greed and narcissism, this message of abandoning the self and loving your neighbor as yourself as the key to happiness and contentment and spiritual growth and being who you were meant to be is no less relevant today than it ever has been. And yet, when you look at the institutional forms that Christianity has taken in many parts of the world, and in our own part of the world, it's hard to see the connection between that gospel and the historical record. And so, the the Babylonians are at the gates. In, In the West, Christianity is diminishing, and it will continue to diminish. We will close churches. That is how it is. But God is still at the heart of Christianity, as God is at the heart of Israel to this day. 
And the message of Jeremiah is the same as the message to us. When we are going to continue to baptize, we are going to continue to practice the faith, we are going to continue to live out the thing that has given us life in the hopes that others may find the life that we have found. And if we find that true life of connection with God through following Jesus, through discipleship, that will be compelling enough that others will want to say, whatever it is that you have, I want some of that. And so I'll, I'll finish with a little story that I've, I've told before. Um, but it's the story of the man that got a message from God saying, today you will find a great treasure. And he had, came to him in a dream, and it was a message from God. And so he kept going down the path and talking to everybody he met and said, I got a dream last night from the Lord who said, I'm going to get a great treasure. And do you know, have you seen a great treasure nearby? And everybody kept saying, no, and you're weird, and stop talking to me. And finally, a guy comes up and says, oh, I found this ruby lying by the road earlier today. It must be for you. Here you can have it. And it was the most valuable ruby that the man had ever seen. And he went, this is it. Thank you. And then he ran away. And then after about five minutes, he stopped and he ran back and he said, no, I want what you have that allowed you to give away this ruby. That's the treasure that I'm looking for. And that's the treasure that's at the heart of Christianity. That's the treasure that's at the heart of, of Judaism. That is the tradition into which we have been called and which we live up to, however partially but it's that that is still as relevant and powerful as ever, which is why I am happy to baptize more people into it, as many as possible, because it's about the real thing right now. It's not about the structures. It's not about the trappings, the robes. That's completely irrelevant. It's about the heart. And the good news today is that there's no reason to be a part of this church to get ahead in life. That's, that's not why you join. Um, which means that why you join is because it has something to do with the faith, something to do with being a disciple of Christ, someone that lives out that life, that, that life of service to others that gives life to us and to everyone and creates a virtuous cycle for all of civilization and society. And, and we, are, we are seeing what happens when we get away from that virtuous cycle. And we can get back into it again, and we will, but it may take a while. It took, the, it took Israel 70 years in Babylon to recapture the heart of who they were. And it's going to take us however long it takes, but we will recapture it because God's not going anywhere and neither is Christianity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we are ready. How many have survived so far? <laughs> okay, could I have the family, please, and the godparents coming forward? And join me around the, the church here at the front, front of the church here. And you have your, you've got a service book. Great. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. And you say together, we present. We present Rita Faye Cox to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is nurtured in the faith and life of the Christian community? We will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? We will, with God's help. Will you, by your, uh, will you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to obey him as your Lord? I do. Will you, who had witnessed these vows, do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ? Amen. Amen. Let us now pray for Rita, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. 
send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water your Son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. And let us all join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent? and return to the Lord. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth? Okay, are we ready? As will ever be. Come here, Rita. Let's have a look. Okay, I'm going to put some water on your head now. Okay, sweetheart. Okay. Are we ready for this? Oh. Uh, Hang on there. Rita Fay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you unscrew this for me, please? Thank you. I sign you with the cross, and mark you as Christ's own forever. Amen. There. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. 
Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. There you go. Okay. We're all done. We're all done. Okay. this to you on her behalf, and I say, receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Let the light shine before others, let the see and glorify the Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may greet each other. Thank you.
good thing it all doesn't depend on me. The Lord be with you. Oh, I'm sorry, I was on the wrong page. Let's try this again. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, we behold your glory. Receive the offering of your people gathered before you, and open our hearts and mouths to praise your great salvation, the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. We praise and thank you, most holy God, for your love sustains the universe. You formed us in your own image, beautiful and good, that we might live in harmony with you and share your delight in creation. When we fall away from you into sin, you never abandon us. In every age, you inspire prophets, saints, and visionaries to call us to return. Above all, you meet us in the person of Jesus Christ, whose life, death, and resurrection opens for us the way of salvation. Therefore, we praise you, joining with every creature on earth and in heaven as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise, blessing, and glory are yours, gracious God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was betrayed took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Christ's death and resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we now offer you this bread and this wine. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this holy table may be freed from sin and rise to fullness of life in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ.
Let us rise and give thanks to God. God in heaven, strengthen the unity of your church so that we who have been fed with holy things may fulfill your will in the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love always. Amen.
is mighty to save. God is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.